Welcome back, folks. In this video, we're going to focus on the fifth and last of our common iterators, the filter function, right? It's gonna behave a little bit differently than the other aggregation iterators we've looked at before, uh, but it's still not too tricky and it's gonna be invaluable when we go to write complex DAX, or frankly, even intermediate DAX, or frankly, even basic DAX. Okay, so let's get started. I am here in iterators.xlsx and I'm in the filter tab. Now, our first four common iterators, they take a temp table, they add an expression column to it, and they aggregate the results. They add up all the values, uh, they find the biggest value, they find the smallest value, or they take the average of them. The filter function, by contrast, doesn't perform an aggregation. It performs a keeping of rows, which is to say, you give it a temp table, you add an expression column, and your definition of the expression column has to return either true or false, right? And uh, then the filter function will just keep the true rows. So why would you do something like this? Well, let's, let's do one. And I think once we do it, it'll be a little easier for me to explain what you would do with it. Why, why does this thing exist? Okay, so here we are in problem one. We're gonna prepare a filter for pasta, right? Okay, so we're gonna assume the filter context is type equals dine-in. So if your filter context is different, be sure to set it to type equals dine-in. Then we're gonna derive all of the values, visible or not, in the dish column. So we're gonna get not one of the values derivations, but one of the all derivations, specifically all the dishes. So we get all three dishes right here, pasta, burger, and salad, control C to copy it. Now I'm gonna click down here and do control V to paste, right, to derive that temp table, right? Notice even though for dine-in, right, we only sold pasta and salad, because we used the all derivation, we got all three dishes, even the burgers, which we didn't actually sell uh, for our dine-in sales. Okay, so we've derived the temp table, and now we're gonna add this column to it, just like before. So click here where it says EXP, do equals, and say click on dish, that column right there for every row check to see if the dish is equal to pasta. Do an equal sign, and in those quotation marks, type in pasta. Close quotation marks, and hit enter. We get a true for the first row, we go ahead, go ahead click on that cell, and drag down the formula. We get a true, a false, and a false, right? Because for this first row, the dish is equal to pasta, burger is not equal to pasta, and salad is not equal to pasta. So we get a true, a false, and a false. So rather than aggregating it, it just keeps the true rows. This is gonna produce not a number, not a scalar, but a temp table. Temp table is gonna look like this. Click here where it says our answer, type in dish, right? So it's gonna have just the dish column, and uh, which of the three rows we're gonna keep? Well, just this first one where it says true. So go ahead and type in pasta. And that's it, right? So this iterator produces not a scalar, but a temp table that looks like this. Now, why would you want that? I mean, I get it. It makes sense to me why I would want to sum up some numbers or find the biggest one or take the average. What's the point of having this temp table right here? So uh, if we come over here to the filter context, we will notice that our filters look an awful lot like temp tables. And that's no coincidence, right? All of the filters in the filter context are temp tables. They're just temp tables that have been added to the filter context. That's what a filter table is, is just any temp table that has been added to the filter context. So if we want to create a new filter context that has a filter for just pasta in it, well, we would use uh, an expression like this to go get all the dishes and whittle it down and shape it to just be this temp table right here, right? And once we have the temp table, we could use a revisor, which we'll get to a little later on, to actually add it to the filter context. So when we ought to want to add a filter, it tends to be a two-step process. We tend to use the filter function to get a temp table and whittle it down to just the rows that we want. And then we use a revisor like calculate to actually add it to the filter context. So we'll talk about adding it later on. For right now, that's why we have this function, right? We're gonna use it to get temp tables and whittle them down to just the rows we want for a particular filter. Okay, <clears throat> so problem number two is gonna be very similar to problem number one. Now, in fact, we're gonna get the same answer. The only difference between these two, it's the same code. The only difference is this one's gonna evaluate with a filter context of type equals to go. So go ahead and click on to go. And now go ahead and run the code, noticing that uh, the derivation is one of these non-respectful derivations. It's using this all function right here, which is on the right-hand side. So it doesn't actually respect the filter. So even though we change the filters to be to go, it doesn't matter, right? So even though you can only, uh, for to go sales, we only have pastas and burgers, we're gonna go ahead and grab all three. Speaking of which, click and drag. Control C to copy, click there, and Control V to paste to derive that temp table. Go get all the dishes, visible or not. Now, 
click here in the expression column, what's the definition? Just like above for every ring, every single row, check to see if that row's dish is equal to pasta. So go ahead, do equal sign, click on that cell right there, and check to see if it is equal to pasta. Close quotation marks, and hit enter. We get a true for the first row, and you can see where this is going. We get a false and a false for burger and salad, because pasta is equal to pasta, Burger does not equal pasta and salad does not equal pasta, right? So what does the filter function do with this, right? It doesn't aggregate it, it just keeps the true rows. So this is gonna produce a temp table that has one column called dish, right? And which rows are we gonna keep? Well, there's only one row that's true, so it's that row right there, pasta. Let's go ahead and type in pasta. There we go, right? This bit of code right here produces this temp table, right? And later on in the class, I'll show you how to take the temp table and actually add it to the filter context. Good, let's keep going. So <clears throat> now we're going to prepare a filter for lunch. We're not actually gonna add it to the filter context, we're just gonna get it ready, okay? So we're gonna use the filter iterator again, which uh, as you may have guessed is gonna be the only iterator we use on this page. We're gonna go derive all of the values of shift, visible or not, right? And check to see if each row is equal to lunch and then keep the true rows. So we're gonna set the filter context to go if we haven't already, right? Uh, notice we're using the all derivation, which means the filter context won't actually affect anything, right? Okay, so let's go get all the shifts. <clears throat> Here we go. There's all the shifts, lunch and dinner, right? Do control C to copy and click here where it says drop temp table just below, control V to paste, right? Click here in the expression column and do equal sign. Okay, so now uh, what's the definition for our expression column? For every row, check to see if that row's shift is equal to lunch. Cool. Click there. Check to see if that is equal to lunch. Go ahead, whoops. I forgot to add my closing parentheses. That's terrible of me, I used to teach Excel. Make sure you add your closing parentheses for lunch. And go ahead, hit enter, and drag that formula down. Okay, <clears throat> so this is the temp table with the expression column. What is the filter iterator gonna do with it? It's just gonna keep the true rows. So it's gonna produce a temp table with one column, shift, I can't type today. Go ahead, hit enter. And uh, what value is gonna be in there? Lunch. Okay, it'll produce that temp table, right? Which is uh, ripe to be pushed into the filter context by a revisor. Okay, so now we're gonna prepare a filter for uh, lunch again, this time with a filter context of dinner, okay? So it's the same code, right? Go ahead and click on dinner. Keeping in mind we're using this all mini shift derivation since that's over here on the right-hand side, these are all the derivations that don't respect the filters, okay? So what do we want? We wanna go get a temp table that has all of these shifts, visible or not. Well, there's the two shifts right there. Keep in mind that we've set the filter context to be dinner. So right now, we should just be looking at dinner, right? Uh, and if we were to take the values of the shift, we would only be able to see dinner, but we're not doing the values of it. We're not using one of these respectful derivations. We're using the all function, which is a non-respectful derivation, which will give us both lunch and dinner. It's gonna ignore the current filters. So click right there, drag down, Control C to copy. Drop here, or I'm sorry, click there where it says drop temp table just below. Control V to paste. Click under the cell under the expression column. And what's the definition of it? Well, you probably know this by heart already. For every single row, check to see if that row shift is equal to lunch. So do equal sign, click there, do equals, and in quotation marks, type in lunch. Be sure to add your closing quotation marks. Hit enter. We get a true for the first one, and we get a false for the second one. So, what does this produce? The iterator takes this temp table with the expression column and just keeps the true rows. So we get a temp table that has one column, shift, and has one row, just lunch. We throw away the dinner column because we got a false for it, okay? Cool, so now we've created a temp table that has a filter for shift equals lunch, right? Even though <laughs> when this whole thing started, our filter context was shift equals dinner, we've created one for shift equals lunch. Okay, so let's show you an example of why when we use the filter function, we tend to, we tend to use these non-respectful derivations, right? We're gonna try and do the exact same thing we did a second ago, but we're gonna use the values function, which is one of our respectful derivations, and it's gonna end up not working, or at least not doing what you probably think it would do, okay? So <clears throat> here on problem five, uh, we're gonna try to prepare a filter for lunch. We're gonna fail in the process. We're gonna start by setting our filter context to shift equals dinner, right? If for some reason you're somewhere else, make sure you click on number three here, okay? 
So now we don't want to get uh, all mini shift. We want values mini shift. So all of the distinct visible values in the shift column, just the visible ones. Okay. So if we look up here, since we have a filter for shift equals dinner, as you might expect, there's only dinner that's visible. We can't see lunch. So let's click on this. Do control C to copy. Click down here to where it says drop temp table just below, control V to paste. And this is the temp table that we derive. And so now the filter iterator is going to add this column to it and just keep the true rows. Okay. So if I click right there, I'm going to do an equal sign for every single row. Check to see if that row is shift is equal to lunch. So click there and check to see if that is equal to, in quotation marks, lunch, close quotation marks, and go ahead, hit enter. Okay. And we get a false. So the filter function only keeps the true rows. How many rows are true in this temp table? None of them, which is why if we were to run this code, we would end up producing a temp table that looks like the following. Click here where it says our answer, type in shift and hit enter and you're done, right? This would produce a temp table with one column shift and zero rows. And if we were to then use this as a filter, we would end up not seeing everything because we would say, we're not allowed, allowed to look at any shifts, okay? So that's why when we're using the uh, filter iterator, we tend to pair it with the one of the all derivations, one of these non-respectful derivations, because it allows us, even if we're looking at dinner, to create a filter for some other shift like lunch, as in problem number four. Okay, so here for problem uh, number six, we're gonna prepare a filter for expensive prices, just to show you that this works on number columns as well. So we're going to set the filter context to shift equals dinner. Hey, it's already there. If for some reason you clicked over here, be sure and click on dinner. We're going to use one of our non-respectful derivations, all of the price per column in the mini table, right? <clears throat> and that gives us all of the prices visible or not, right? In the mini table, which is right up here. So select those, do control C to copy. Click here where it says drop temp table just below, control V to paste. Click right there to add our expression column. What's the definition this time? Well, it's not an equals, it's a greater than. Check to see if every row's price per is greater than seven. Okay, so I'm gonna do equals. Check to see if that is greater than seven. Go ahead, hit enter. We get a false for the first row, and then we get a true and true. Now, why do we get a false? Well, keep in mind we said greater than, not greater than or equals to. So seven is not bigger than seven, which is why we get a false right there. Nine is bigger than seven, so we get a true. 11 is bigger than seven, so we also get a true. So what rows are we gonna keep? This iterator, the filter iterator, it's gonna keep all the true rows. What does it end up keeping? Click over here to where it says our answer. This is gonna produce a temp table with one column called price per, per, and it's gonna have the values nine and 11. So go ahead, type in nine and 11. There you go. That is what uh, this code right here would produce. We could then add this using a revisor to the filter context to filter just our transactions where the price per was either nine or 11. Okay, so <clears throat> now we're going to use something uh, a bit more complicated, not a lot, but just a bit. We're going to use a non-respectful derivation, but we're not gonna use one of these ones down here that points at a column. We're gonna use this one up here that points at an entire table, just to show you how it works. Okay, so we're gonna prepare a filter for dinner transactions, not just for dinner, but just for all the transactions that happened at dinner. Seems like a, sl a slight distinction, but it'll become meaningful later on. So we're gonna start with our derivation. Actually, I'm gonna say we should start with our filter context, make sure we're on the right filters. We are, but if for some reason you clicked over here, be sure you click on dinner, right? And so now we're gonna go ahead and derive all the rows of many, visible or not, that's that derivation right here. This is one of our non-respectful derivations. Click on it, control C to copy. Click down here where it says drop temp table just below, do control V to paste. And we get uh, all these rows, okay? Now click here for the expression column. What are we gonna add? We're gonna add uh, for our expression column, a column with the definition does the shift of every row equal dinner, okay? So go ahead, do equal sign. Click on shift over here, do equals. And then in quotation marks, do dinner. Don't forget the two ends and the closing quotation marks. It's apparently I can't remember them. Okay, so click on that cell and let's go ahead and drag that formula all the way down. And uh, as you might expect, we get falses for the first four rows because they happened at lunch and we get trues for the last three rows because they happened at dinner. Okay, so what is the filter function gonna do with this expression column? 
it's gonna just keep the true rows, which is these three rows right there. So uh, here we're gonna have to uh, bend backwards a little bit. This is where Excel and DAX differ some. Uh, to make our answer over here, go ahead and do this with me. If you want to, you could type the whole thing in, but I'm too lazy for that. Click here and drag over to get those column headers. Do Control C to copy. Click underneath the O in our answer and do Control V to paste. Cool. Now uh, come down here to the very first dinner row. Hover your mouse over the D in dinner. Make sure it's not this one or this one, but this one right here, third from the bottom. Left click and drag to select all those rows. We don't keep the expression column, we just keep the original columns. Control C to copy. Click underneath the S and shift and control V to paste, okay? So uh, this code right here would produce this temp table right here, which we could then uh, use a filter revisor to stick in the filter context. We have to make our filter context a little bit bigger because this one looks like it won't even fit, uh, but you could totally do that. You could totally do that. Okay. Uh, by the way, I I'm lying about size. Uh, you don't actually have to do anything to make the filter context bigger. If we were to add it, it would, uh, I mean, it size doesn't really matter. No, don't worry too much about that. Okay. So a bit of a rabbit hole there. Sorry about that. Okay, so here we are in problem number eight. Uh, we're gonna prepare a filter for dining dinner transactions. It's gonna be fairly similar to this one up here, but our expression column's just gonna get a slight bit more complicated, right? We're gonna drive the same table, but this time we're gonna keep the rows where the shift is equal to dinner and the type is equal to dine-in, okay? So let's start by setting our filter context. Mine's already on dinner, but if for some reason you're somewhere else, click on dinner, right? We're going to derive this table right here, use this derivation to get all the rows of many visible or not. That's this derivation right here. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this temp table. Control C to copy. Click underneath where it says drop temp table just below, Control V to paste. And now click on that expression column cell and do equal sign. And this is gonna get slightly more complicated. Go ahead and type in A and D and and go ahead and type in an opening parenthesis. We're gonna use the and function. So we want two bits of logic. The shift has to equal dinner and the type has to equal dine-in. So let's start with the first one. Shift equal dinner. So go ahead and click on lunch right there. That's shift. Do an equal sign and in quotation marks, type in dinner. Close quotation marks and then add a comma. Now we're in argument two of and, so it has to be this and this other thing. Second part of the and is the type has got to equal dine-in. So click on type, click on to go right there, and do equals, in quotation marks, dine-in. Be sure and capitalize the letters, okay? Now go ahead and do close in parentheses, and hit enter. Click on the cell, and go ahead and drag that formula all the way down, right? Now before, uh, the bottom three rows were all true. Now it's just the very bottom two rows, right? Because this first dinner row right here, that's not a dining row, that's a to-go row. And both of these things have to be true. The shift has to equal dinner and the type has to equal dining. The only place where that's true is these bottom two rows, which is why we get a true and a true and a false everywhere else. What is the filter function gonna do with this expression column? It's gonna just keep the true rows. So same as before, click up here on shift and drag all the way over to cost per, control C to copy, click under the O and R answer, control V to paste. And now uh, don't click on this third from the bottom row, click on the second from the bottom row to select those cells right there, right? That second dinner all the way down to the five bucks. Control C to copy, click there and do control V to paste, right? And this bit of code would produce this temp table right here, which we could then use uh, a revisor to actually stick into the filter context to filter down our derivations, okay? And that, my friends, is how the filter function works.